Hello and welcome to a new video and today we're taking a look at the first day of my cruise with the Celestial Olympia. Here on the map you can see the approximate route of that day. We're starting in Lavrio near Athens and then we're going to the island of Mykonos. And we are starting very early in the morning because embarkation with Celestial is a bit different. We're starting with the embarkation already in the morning as we're leaving Lavrio at around 11 in the morning. Lavrio is a developing port area, so there's only one hotel at the moment, which is not a high-class hotel, but it's okay for one night, in my opinion. There used to be a train station in Lavrio, but this is not in use anymore, so if you want to go from the airport to Lavrio, I would recommend taking the transfer. I would chose welcome transfers. That's the easiest way to get to Lavrio. Here in Lavrio we have uh, at the moment now three beautiful ships with a very uncertain future. Celestial Crystal, Aegean Odyssey and now also the Celestial Olympia which is currently docked here in Lavrio. Most probably waiting to sail for Turkey to be scrapped and also the Crystal and the Aegean Odyssey do not have a certain future probably they will also get scrapped soon if they should come back into service anytime soon i will be the first to book a cruise on that beautiful ships as both of them are extremely nice and i would love to go on those ships here we can see my cabin i chose the cheapest cabin category which is a standard inside cabin which comes nice it's of course not modernized but that's what i was expecting from a 40 year old ship also expecting a 40 year old cabin and it has everything that you need you have a desk with a hairdryer with power sockets not too much but you do have power sockets we have a big wardrobe we have a safe so everything is available we have a nice bathroom which doesn't look old at all it's a standard cruise ship bathroom in my opinion looking very nice of course with the shower curtain but that was also what i was expecting so in general i really like my cabin it is of course not very modern, but as I said, that is also what I was expecting from my cruise. And then it was time for the safety drill. Señoras y señores Calimera, muy buenos días y bienvenidos a bordo del Celestial Olympia. Su atención. The mandatory safety drill was done the old-fashioned way, so we all had to get our life jackets, went to the promenade deck to our lifeboat and waited there and got the instructions from the crew there. Meanwhile, we could take another look at those wonderful cruise ships here, the Aegean Odyssey and the Celestial Crystal, both out of service currently, and then it was time to leave the port of Lavrio. Speaking about times, of course, this is a Greek ship, and in Greece everything is seen a bit more relaxed so if it is written in the daily program that the safety drill will be at 11 it doesn't mean that it will be 11 sharp. In this case it was actually 11.45 as we were a bit delayed with the departure probably one excursion was late or something like this happened and so also the safety drill was a bit later but it was also written in the program that it is approximately at 11 and everybody should wait for the announcements of course you know the fellow cruise passengers and sharp 11 everybody was waiting with the life jacket on for the drill i was waiting for the announcement but i was also getting slightly worried that i might have missed the safety drill but actually it was just a bit delayed without an announcement but this is a bit of the lifestyle don't expect everything to be that much on time and just do it the Greek way and take everything a bit more easy, be relaxed, you're on holiday. So this is kind of the vibe on board. And of course I went straight to my favorite place on board, which is of course the Horizons Bar, around the funnel and there I had the fantastic view of our ship sailing in between the Greek islands. First, when we left Lavrio, we sailed past the island of Makronissos, then we sailed past Kia and Kitnos. And then we had the small uninhabited island of Giaros and another island called Syros before arriving at Mykonos, 
where the cruise ship marina was already there on the anchor. We did not have to use the tender boats, in this case we got the docking location in the uh, port of Mykonos. Both have ups and downs, so if you're on the anchor you have to use the tender boats obviously, and if you're in the port it is a few kilometers to the city center. So in this case we were in the port, but Celestia was taking care of us and had organized shuttle buses for free, which is very nice. And it was a bit organized, so we got a specific time to uh, leave the ship. And then we just had to wait a little bit for the buses. And there was still a queue and it was not over organized. So we just had a certain time when we were supposed to leave the ship and then we had to queue. They were just taking care that everybody's queuing up properly. And that was it. And then we just boarded the buses and they had, I think, around seven or eight buses going in circles to the city center coming back. So it was not a very long wait. It took about 10 to 15 minutes to get to the city center. We arrived there just during the sunset. And that was a very nice. Mykonos is a very, very nice destination. One of the most visited places in uh, Greece. And that is for a reason. We're gonna see that now. One reason for me are the cats. Of course, there are a lot of stray cats in Mykonos. Mykonos is famous for the stray cats. And the good thing is a lot of people are taking care of those stray cats. So they receive food and also they looked quite healthy. They were very trusting. So it's very nice so you can approach those stray cats without being scared of them. As you can see here, they are all very trusting and tame and kind. And of course also the city of Mykonos itself. The island is called Mykonos, but also we are now in the city of Mykonos and this is a fabulous city. It's unbelievably beautiful. It looks like it is in an amusement park and not like a real city because it looks so different from what we are used in, let's say mainland Europe or wherever you are from. I think there's no place that looks like Mykonos somewhere else and it's fantastic and very interesting to see. Here we can see the famous windmills of Mykonos. This is one of the main sides of the island, right in the middle of the city. So it's easy to get there just by walking. Here you can also see the Olympia in the background, so you can see how far the docking location is away from the city center. It would be possible to walk, but the buses were much faster and they were for free. And here we can uh, take a look at the so-called uh, Little Venice. But before that we can see our beautiful Olympia one more time and we can wander a bit around the windmills of Mykonos. And now we can go to Little Venice. Little Venice is a small part of the city where the houses are like directly built into the sea, just like in Venice. That's why it got this name here. You can see a Little Venice. So if you're planning to go to Mykonos by ship, you should plan a few hours for this city. I thought I will be done in about an hour, just strolling a bit through the city, but actually it took me, I think, two th or th even three hours to explore the whole city. And it's not a big city, but there's just so much to see. And I just went into a few of the shops. They have very nice uh, shops here and a lot of nice souvenirs in a calm and nice atmosphere so nobody's forcing you to go in the shops or trying to catch your attention you just can easily roam through the city do a bit of shopping you can visit one of the many bars and restaurants here we have an area where there are several churches all together some of them are just ruins you cannot access them uh, at all, but some of them are still existing, some are ruins, but it's quite interesting to see. Here we can see a bit more of the city center, and then I walked up to another windmill, and from there you have this fantastic panoramic view over the city of Mykonos, and of course you can see the cruise ships and the windmills. <laughs> Here you can see the windmill that I walked up to. You can easily find that one on uh, Google Maps. And of course, some more cat content. Also up here were a lot of stray cats. As there are not that much tourists up here, they were even happier to see someone who's cuddling them 
This one was following me for, I think, 500 meters until she realized that I cannot bring her on the cruise ship, even though I wanted to, but that's unfortunately not possible. And also there were a lot of stray cats, so I would have to bring many cats on board. Meanwhile, the marina was leaving the port and here we have some more cats on the way to the bus. And as I said, you can easily approach them. They're all very kind and very happy if somebody is taking care of them, just cuddling a bit. Of course, if you have food, you're a bit more interesting than someone who's just cuddling them. But if nobody's around with food, they also are happy for cuddles. Then I took the bus back to the ship. As you can see, there were already multiple buses waiting. So absolutely no waiting times here. It was very well organized. And here we are back at our beautiful Olympia, illuminated in the night. What a fantastic ship with such beautiful lines. And then I went up to the Leda casual dining for dinner, served in form of a buffet. And here you can see we have even shrimps on a buffet and you will not see that very often because you know how expensive shrimps and prawns are. And they are here on an open buffet so you could just take a plate full of prawns and that shows how high the food quality on board is. Even such expensive items are on a buffet, so we will see that later on when we go to the Aegean restaurant, but the food quality on board is insanely good. And talking about insanely good, here we can see a few clips from the show this evening, and the shows on board are also insanely good. I've seen shows in a multi-million dollar theater on big ships that spend a lot of money on those shows, but this one was much better than on most ships I've been on. And actually this was one of the best shows that I've ever seen on a cruise ship and that was very surprising for such an old small cruise ship. So I was very impressed in a positive way by that. And after that I went again to my favorite bar after watching the Sail Away in Mykonos and then I had another drink at the Horizons bar around the funnel and enjoyed a bit of the sailing in the direction of Turkey. But this will be the topic of the next video. Here you can see when this next video will be uploaded. As always, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider to comment, like, subscribe or share the video link. And I hope to see you in my next video.